packaging. Incineration is also expensive and dangerous due to the harmful chemical compounds released. The introduction of biodegradable plastics with similar material properties to replace synthetic plastics is a possible solution for waste disposal problems. There are many forms of bioplastics, for instance polyglycolides, polylactates and polyhydroxyalkanoates. Polyhydroxyalkanoates or PHA as we will call them from now on are among the most promising bioplastics because they are thermoplastics, meaning they belong to the big group of plastics that can be molded into a new shape when heated, and because their strength and toughness are similar to polypropylene, which is the second most common plastic after polyethylene, uh, because their properties can be changed by altering their composition and because they are completely resistant to moisture and have a very low oxygen permeability. That is why the PHAs will be the main subject of this short film. Various bacterial species accumulate intracellular PHA granules as energy and carbon reserves in their cells. In overproducing mutant forms, these granules can even cause a striking alternation of the bacterial shape. So, how do these bacteria make PHA, what happens inside? To answer this question, we'll zoom in on a hypothetical bacterium forming a PHA. In this case, polyhydroxybutyrate or PHB. Confusing? Well, PHA is the denominator and PHB is one of its many forms. PHB is also the most common and best characterized form of PHA stored by bacteria. Other frequently stored PHAs are PHV, PHMB, PHMV, etc. But for this example, the focus will lay on the production of PHB inside a bacterium. So, PHAs are used by bacteria to store carbon as an energy reserve. So, obviously, to make a PHA, a carbon source is needed. In this case, sugars. Also, for a bacteria to make PHBs, PHB metabolic genes are needed. For the biosynthesis of PHB from carbohydrates, the CBA gene cluster is a good example because it encodes for only three proteins needed to form PHB out of sugars. Gene A encodes for the enzyme 3 ketotiolase Gene B encodes for the enzyme acetoacetyl coenzyme A reductase and gene C encodes for the enzyme PHB synthase, which is positioned on the granule. 
In their metabolism, bacteria form acetyl coenzyme A out of sugar. The enzymes formed out of the uh, CBA gene cluster convert this to PHB in the following way. 3-ketotiolase combines two molecules of acetyl coenzyme A to form acetoacetyl coenzyme A. Acetoacetyl coenzyme A reductase reduces this to 3-hydroxybutyryl coenzyme A. Finally, PHB is produced when PHB synthase polymerizes 3-hydroxybutyryl coenzyme A by liberating coenzyme A. In this way, a very long polymer can be formed and a PHA is typically between 100 and 30,000 polymerized hydroalkanoates. This is only one pathway in which a bacteria can form a PHA. There are also many other pathways known in the forming of PHA and they all have the last step of this process in common. The removal of coenzyme A and the formation of a PHA. The form of PHA, so whether it becomes a PHB, PHV, PHMV, etc. totally depends on the bacteria and the medium on which it grows. Let's take a look at the main building block of PHA. It looks like this and the pendant or R group varies depending on the medium available and of course the genes of the bacteria. The pendant group also makes the PHA have different traits. For this we will give the example of P 